the sun is finally out, the weather has finally warmed up a little bit. It's about 10 degrees today, so it's hardly tropical, but it's warming up. And today, I'm expecting this ride to really start to warm up because I'm on the brand new Tracer GT Plus. Now, believe it or not, I've never ridden a Tracer ever. So this is the first time riding a Tracer. This is the top of the range GT Plus model, which has the adaptive cruise control. So you've got the big adaptive cruise control unit at the bottom there. Very well hidden, very sleek, the way they've implemented that radar on the front. I like that. It's also got a bigger screen now. The GT Plus has a great big screen. The standard Tracer doesn't have that big screen, but the GT Plus has the big screen. Also has some clever integration with the braking system and that radar, which we'll go into. Electronic, electronic KYB suspension, you know, fully loaded. This motorcycle though, costs 15,100. So all of that tech has raised the price of this bike. But what is it like? Now this is gonna be a first ride video. So in this video, we're just gonna take this out for a bit of a spin, you know, get some first impressions of it. And then later, we're gonna take this on a little bit of a day trip somewhere, just to really sort of get the feel of the bike. So uh, if that sounds of interest, if, you, if you're interested in the new Tracer GT Plus, then this is the video for you. So grab yourself a cup of tea and chop C, roll the intro. One thing which is great with the Tracer, which I really sort of commend Yamaha for doing, is including the luggage as part of the bike. They don't, you don't have to pay an extra thousand pound or whatever for the luggage. It's included in the price of the bike. And that's the same with the Tracer GT. So the non-plus version, you also get luggage included with that. You, but you don't get luggage on the very base tracer, which I think is about 11 grand, the very base tracer. So there's quite a big jump in price from the base tracer to this fully kitted, radar enabled, fully electronic plus version. But uh, it's all about how does this bike ride? I'm out in my new RST leathers today, my custom leather suit from RST. So I'm riding this in full leathers. <laughs> <laughs> Just because I'm on, I'm going to the uh, new Super Duke launch next week, and I'm gonna be, you know, I've got to bed these in a little bit before the track, before the track day. So this is why I'm coming out in full race leathers today. You know, I'm I'm looking like one of those white knob beds today, and I've got my new Knox gloves to match my suit. These need bedding in as well, so I thought I'd come out all my track gear and bed in uh, bed in this kit while I'm on the tracer. Oh, swinging your leg over relatively easy because it's not massively high this thing certainly not for a six foot two 20 stone fatty like me that's that new uh, display can't remember how big it is i've actually left my phone at home so all of my technical specs are on my phone so i'm having to do this from memory <laughs> Listen to that. She's eager. Loads of induction roar. <laughs> Yamaha, I think, are the only Japanese manufacturer which sort of are producing, I know this is sounding a bit bad, but exciting bikes, exciting engines, let's call it. The CP3 motor in this is a gorgeous gorgeous power plant obviously the cp4 motor in the mt10 and r1 is a gorgeous gorgeous motor even the the cp2 uh, is it in the traces they're called a cp2 of course it is that's brilliant as well so first impressions of the riding position it's uh, very comfortable you're quite upright quite upright the pegs are sort of beneath my hips quite a standardish riding position actually the bars are moderately wide not massively wide but i'd say moderately wide and that's quite close to you you know i've got a nice sort of bend in my arm i'm not outstretched too much i could say my back is vertically i'm not there's no weight over the front it feels like a very comfortable upright position which is nice as i say i'm six two 
and I'm finding this really comfortable. What I do love with this bike is the seat is really wide and, that, and that's something which is new. They have adjusted the seat. The seat's had some rework done to it and I think it's wider and a bit more padding as well. So I've got a wide arse me and it's fully supported on the seat. So that's going to make a huge difference when you try and do any sorts of distance on this. So a comfortable wide seat. So when we do our long ride, we'll report back and see how that feels. So riding position, yeah, really nice. I feel sort of sporty. The suspension is fully electronic on this, as it is on the GT. But with the GT Plus, the suspension is also built in with the radars. The radar is not just for the adaptive cruise control. It's also doing some other funky stuff, safety features, which, which we'll come on to in a minute. But the suspension feels nice. I mean, this is just street mode, but I'm getting really good feedback from the road. It's KYB electronic suspension and yeah, it's got really nice feedback from the road. Plenty of, you know, I can tell what the tarmac's doing. Actually, while I've got a twisty bit, I'm going to see if I can bang it into sport mode. Let's put it in sport mode quickly. Yeah, the throttle response I can tell already is definitely uh, a bit more sporty now. But the suspension doesn't feel a huge amount different initially. I mean, that may chart to try a bit more, but initially the suspension be yeah, perhaps a little bit firmer. Let's put, go hard on the brake, front brake. Yeah, and I think more support under braking as well. So it's got like anti-dive technology. I mean, this bike is, you know, it's, it's massively laden with technology. Let's slide through there. Yeah, Yamaha have given you the option of three different Tracer 9, so you can choose if you want that tech or not. So, you know, you've got that option to get the cheaper bike if you... Because the very base model doesn't even come with electronic suspension. It's standard suspension, you know. But the, the other two, the GT and the standard one, don't get this lovely new dash. You've still got that split-screen dash. But I do like that new dashboard. That's, that's really nice. But you, you do get a lot of tech on this GT Plus, but it's there if you want it. So you've got adaptive cruise control. You've also got a very clever braking assist system. Okay, now I'm going to see. I'm going to see if I can get this to work at some stage. But basically, even when the adaptive cruise control isn't on, because the radar's working and it knows the distance I'm travelling from the car in front, if I start braking and the bike decides, and this is the thing some people might not like, the bike decides that I'm not going to stop with the amount of braking force I'm putting in, the bike will add additional braking. So if that guy slams his brakes on, and you know, a lot when after analysis of crash analysis, it seems that a lot of people don't brake hard enough, and this is one of the biggest reasons why you know motorcyclists crash into things, because people don't use enough of the brakes. You know, they're only being using half of the brakes performance because they're afraid it's going to lock up and they're and they're hitting the car in front or whatever, gate, wall, you know, whatever. So Yamaha have decided, they've implemented a system that if it's not, if it doesn't think you're applying enough brake pressure to stop, it will add additional brake pressure, you know, also using the IMU, so using the, what bikes, the lean angle of the bike, you know, using the other data it's gathered about from the ABS, so obviously if it breaks in too hard and it starts locking out, it will reduce the amount of braking force, but the idea is, you know, it will help you stop if you're not applying enough brake force. Now that is only in a, it, that won't automatically break. So it won't automatically break the bike. It will only activate if you're already braking. So if you're already braking, it will add additional brake power, if you like, if it thinks you're not going to stop. So that's a that's, that's a first for a motorcycle. It's the first bike to have that system. So uh, I'll see if I can feel that working. If I, you know, if I'm not a pro <laughs> so this guy here, if I'm not applying enough brake, thinks I'm going to hit him. Can I notice the bike starting to brake a little bit harder? Yeah, you get it's come up on the screen, that flashing on the screen. Did you see that? Big flash on the screen to say that I, I was <laughs> there was a potential collision about to happen. So I don't know if it, well, I'll play around with that a bit more and see if I could get that to activate. That's good, isn't it? A safety feature. You end up putting yourself at risk to see if it works. I don't think that's the point of it. It's got a nice feel to this. This feels sporty and fun. I think it weighs about 220 kilos. Like I said, I forgot my phone and I forgot to look at all my stats, but I think it's about 223 kilos fully fueled, if memory serves me right. I'll put it on the screen if it doesn't. Um, and, a, and 114 horsepower, so it's not, you know, it's not the most powerful 
sports tourer out there, but it's the way this engine makes its power, it's the torque this engine's got. You know, it, there's plenty there, I would say, for anyone, realistically, you know, to enjoy. I mean, you could always argue you need more power, but then, of course, with more power, because more capacity, the whole bike grows in weight. I think this is a good balance of weight versus power. Power to weight. A little bit more water in the road. Let's take it a little bit. St Christ, mate, do you want to cut the corner anymore? First gear power. Yeah, you don't need more than that. <laughs> that's, that's enough power to have a lot of fun with. The front's getting really light. The brakes are decent. The brakes aren't as good as the M209. SP, I guess there's more weight there, but the brakes are good. I'm getting a decent amount of feel from the brakes. The whole bike is feels fun. It's got a fun feel. It's making me want to go fast. It's making me want to push on. And that's always a good sign. You know, if you're forcing the bike to go fast, then it's not an exciting machine. This is definitely an exciting machine. And it's encouraging me to get on the throttle, push it into corners. <laughs> Brake late, hang into the corners. Oh, and there's plenty of power if you leave in the lower gear as well. Woo! Yeah, this is nice. Changes direction nicely. <laughs> yeah, this is a lot of fun when pushed, I have to say. A lot of fun when pushed. And you've got to think, hang on a minute, I've got panniers on this, I've got a screen, I've got comfort, I've got heated grips, a standard. Makes a lot of sense. The heated grips are really nice and hot, I'm getting a lot of heat through those grips. Yeah, I think you've got three levels of heat. There's not a button for the grips, it's in the menu. You've got this little jog wheel thing here. A, a slight criticism is this jog wheel is quite close to the indicators, so if you've got big hands like me and brand new gloves which need bedding in a little bit, it's, it's a little bit fiddly here. But as you scroll round on that jog wheel, you go through different options. Now, of course, like all the other manufacturers, this bike's got an app, you can integrate it with your phone. But I think for the navigation side of things, you need a Garmin. I'm sure you need a Garmin to get the nav on-screen navigation to work. I think you're tied in with Garmin from memory, but we'll confirm that on the, on the follow-up review. What's great with this, because it's got a full IMU, Yamaha have given you the option to separate wheelie control and traction control. So there's a lot of options you can play with and are for the next video I'm going to go through and configure this exactly how I want it. But I love the fact that they've included the option to, you know, disable wheelie control and keep traction control on. There's the heated grips, so the grips are on this sort of big wheel you're spinning around. Themes, you can change the themes of the display. What have we got on the themes? Yeah, I do like that display. I think, you know, it's just a big analogue rev counter is great, but it's quite stylized. but I guess that's fine. I think that one's quite good. Or maybe that one. Fuel gauge, of course, looks like it's just segmented again, like the M209, like the other Yamaha models. So you don't get a real fuel gauge, if you like. You get different segments. Like, so you don't know you lost, your first half a tank has gone in one whole segment. I don't you know, that, that's a very basic fuel can, uh, fuel gauge. But I don't know if you've got range to empty. I'll have a play around with all that stuff for the next video, I'll let you know. But I like the display, it's nice and big, it's clear, easy to read, it's got a lot of information on it. Very good, very good indeed. Right, let's give it a little push up the hill climb. I'm on the brakes. It's got, a, in that sport mode, that suspension actually, it's got a lot, of, a lot of front support. I like that. How dry are we going to be? Got to be a bit careful, I think it's like 10 degrees. And a lot of shit in the road. What is nice is this sort of overhang on the tank, which you can, you can lock your legs in. Be careful about that, Ben, with the camera. I'll be the first one I've lost. But yeah, it feels nice, actually. I mean, you, can, you could get your knee down on this, I would say. I'm not going to today. <laughs> the conditions aren't for it, but yeah, it's got a really nice sporty feel. Listen to that induction roar. Yeah, loads of brake support, which I like a lot. Direction changes are good. 
Lovely noise from the uh, induction row as well. This is bloody good. Okay, so from the sports part of the sports tour, uh, this, is, this is really good. So I'm just going to pop it back into the street mode and see how much difference and how much feel there is a difference when you swap between those modes. Even in street, the suspension setup is sort of quite sporty. You know, I'm getting, I can feel the texture of the tarmac. You know, it's, um, you're not sort of wafted along like you're in some sort of Rolls Royce, you know, it's definitely more of a connected feel to the road, but that's good, it's a sports tourer. You know, I don't want to lose all of that feel from the road and think, well, I've got to mess about with modes to get that feel. You've still got a good amount of feel in the street mode, and I suspect you can go in and adjust that suspension in the custom mode and have, have it harsher when you go in sport and softer when you go in street. We'll have a good play around with that for the next video, but I'm sure you can do all that. You can do all that sort of stuff on the other Yamahas. So I'm expecting to be able to do that on this, so let's see. I've heard a lot of complaints about the screen on this bike, like causing buffeting, just not being very good. One thing of it is a little bit rickety. It, it's a, there's a lot of movement in the screen, but it is adjustable up and down, you know, while you're riding. That's the lower position. Get a look, I'm not getting, I'm getting a bit annoyed. Where's the lit wind? The wind is sort of halfway up my helmet in that lower position. And in the higher position, it's sort of at the upper part of my helmet and I'm six foot two so if this were my bike and I was going on a long trip I'd probably get a little extra little deflector on top but then that's going to make it even more rickety so your screen's okay but a little bit a little bit rickety mirrors are good see behind me nicely you've got the hand guards mode sport let's give it a little bit of a tickle now I don't I'm hoping no one's turned off the wheelie control or anything and it's all configured so I'm going to cover the rear brake. Give it a little bit of a tickle up here. <laughs> the front gets really quite light and lively there and the bars are getting a little bit of a waggle to them. But yeah, it goes well. I mean, that's nothing wrong with that, is there? 114 horsepower is still a lot of fun. Enough fun, enough power for anyone there, I would argue. Brakes, pretty good. I mean, they're not the best brakes in the world. There's a little bit of vagueness to them. Also, the lever feels really high. I've noticed this on a lot of Yamahas. They put the lever really high. I'd like it down a little bit more, so I may have a play around with the lever height there. And I was going to do a little bit of a, a walk around in the car park while we're here, but it seems there's a lot of people out for lunch. So there she is, the Tracer 9 GT Plus. Must say, I'm quite liking this uh, grey colour. I know it's all the rage at the moment, the uh, sort of Nardo, Audi Nardo grey. They started it, didn't they? But I quite like that. And it's got, uh, my, my Hope and my Tard's going to have something similar to that, I think. But anyway, not talking about that, are we? As I mentioned at the beginning, this is the radar module, which I think Yamaha have done a you know, really quite a nice job of integrating that without making it too obvious. This is the seat I was telling you about. So you see, it's just a really is quite a wide seat and they've put a little sort of textured, well, there's a little, that's like a little gel piece actually, but it does feel a little bit hard when you push it. So we'll have to see how we get on with the longer run, but I like the fact it's nice and wide. Also the uh, pillion seat is a reasonable size as well. So I think your pillion, would be quite happy on there and they've got a little grab rail as well so i think um seating point of view is very nice i think also there's an optional heated seat this doesn't come standard but there's an optional heated seat available for it as well also you've got a, a center stand as well comes with a center stand which is nice it's, it's obviously fully kitted this one i think the only thing it doesn't have is as i mentioned the heated seat but everything else is included you've also got a usb here as well, USB charger, which I've got running uh, charging my camera up. The switch gear is a little bit cramped. As I mentioned, you've got the little jog wheel here to go through the menus, plus you've got your indicators right next to it, your cruise control, and you've also got a button on top to adjust your cruise control distance, which is this one, which is unusual. You'd think that'd be in the menu, but they've included that you know, accessible 
So maybe that's not my, maybe I might have preferred that to be my heated grips maybe, but they've, they've done the, ra the radar range on the front there. One thing I would say, it's a little bit cheap looking, some of the plastics. So slight criticism would be, especially this bit around the tank, this piece here looks a little bit cheap and plasticky, this would be a, a slight criticism. But I think overall, the sort of fit and finish is really good. The engine finish is really good. You know, I, think, I think the fit and finish is high, but some of the plastics are a little tiny bit cheap feeling. A nice little feature on a sports tourer is the uh, adjustable preload. So you've got manually adjustable preload for the rear shock. Lovely, I've wound that right up to fatty spec. So there's your screen. And as you scroll along with the toggle wheel, as I mentioned, you can take you through some of these different options. Ah, we can look at the SC on or off, so stability control on or off. I'll have it on, please. Grip warmer, ah, white, the Yamaha ride control settings. Let's have a look at those. Yeah, so this is a, I have to have a play around with this, but this is what I was talking about. This is where you can adjust everything. So the sport mode, quick shifter on, BC, brake control BC. So you can see that there's a lot of options to play around with here. So there she is, the Tracer GT Plus. Let's jump back on. <laughs> Wheels up. The quick shifter has what Yamaha are calling the third generation quick shifter. I think the first generation was just an upshift. The second generation is an up and down quick shifter and the third generation enables you to change down while you're accelerating so if i'm accelerating i can change it out without closing the throttle which i think only the aprilias the aprilias do that or they used to do that but yeah that's what yamaha are calling a third generation quick shifter yeah it's got an a really agile so it changes direction really quickly so I think it's about 220 kilos, but it's, you know, it's, it's a real, the nose is quite short, I think. I fe it feels like the actual wheelbase is possibly quite short on this. So, you know, it really, really changes direction quick. I like that. You know, it's a lively bike, lively engine, and also lively handling as well. You know, it's not flighty. I mean, it was getting them when I was on the full power, the bars, we're getting a little bit of a waggle on, but it sort of shows it's... Oh, there's a deer just run across the road. Look, there's a whole parade of deer. There they go up there. That's right. I'm glad I wasn't shooting up here when they all ran out. Let's get past this Tesla. Now, yeah, there's plenty of overtaking ground, plenty of feel from the tarmac. I mean, today, I'll say it's about 10 degrees. Maybe the light's fading. It could be getting a bit colder now. And I'm getting good feedback from the road. I like these tyres, actually. I think these are the Bridgestone T32s. I'll pop it on the screen. I think they're the new Bridgestone sort of sports touring tyre. The suspension, even in sport mode, I'm getting plenty of support, but it's not crashy. It's plush. You know, really quite plush. It's not bottoming out. There's some big bumps back there, which can bottom some systems out. Not this one. Oh, I can't see. Bloody sun. Pigeons. <laughs> Woo! She's... Yeah, she's got a really nice chassis on her. Really fun bike this is. Wet bit. Stand it up for the wet bit. Yeah, really good. Feels quite similar to the XSR from the sort of handling point of view, I'd say. A little bit heavier, of course, but you can't really feel it. Surprisingly agile would be my uh, comments. There's a lot of muck in the road. A lot of muck in the road. A little bit of wheel lift. Not masses of it over the bumps. <laughs> Getting a bit bumpy back there. Oh, and into a 30. So there we go, that is the Tracer GT Plus. So we've tr tested the sport 
part of the sports touring on this machine. The sports part is absolutely brilliant. Now we need to test the touring part of this bike. So I'll be taking this bike out for a decent day trip, a decent amount of miles, two, two, three hundred mile, miles, not mile an hour, two or three hundred mile an hour round trip to see what the comfort's like, fuel economy, you know, all of those elements which make a good touring machine. So if you're interested in that, you know what you've got to do, stick around, subscribe, like the video, share the videos, all of that jazz, and I'll see you on the next one. Cheers, guys.